I don't know, we did not report to the police. We did not report to the police because um, it wouldn't have made any difference at that point. Why? Because at the place where he was dropped, there was a policeman and he told the policeman what has happened to him. It didn't even help him to move him to the closest place. It was a passerby who actually carried my husband all the way to Rockview Hotels. The one chance people, okay, he was the only one in the one, two, three, so you assume it's a field there. Three of them behind and then two in front. So you are happy you just got a vehicle to go home, so you just jump in. So they always make you, pre they pretend like it's a moving vehicle really. So you, you've you been trying to rush for a vehicle and lo and behold, one just stops in front of you and you know, so that's what it is. As private cars join other commercial vehicles in transporting people from one place to another, it has become difficult for commuters to recognize which vehicle is safe to board. One chant is a typical slang for robbers who pose as transporters to lure unsuspecting commuters into their cars to attack or rob people of their belongings. The tactics used by these criminals are numerous as their device twisted means to cover their tracks. According to what has been learned, two major type of one chance operation exist. Some perpetrators use the green car, albeit less frequently, to lure in their victims by posting as passengers. Some frequently use private vehicles for their nefarious activities, parading through crowded parks, bus stops, and along the road to trap and rob off suspecting passengers, usually very early in the morning and late at night when many commuters are most anxious to board any vehicle. Robbery is not a new crime. With the use of technology and in a city where many people are usually on the move even in the wee hours, crime has taken a more insidious and intricate form with perpetrators devising twisted means to cover their tracks. It is no longer news that many unpleasant things happen during those early and odd hours of the day. People are either harassed, mocked, raped or robbed of their possession and sometimes killed. Unfortunately, Umfrim Kolawole is not alive to tell of his ordeal at the hands of his alleged killers, like other one chance victims who were robbed of their belongings or injured. Ruth TV visited the bereaved family and his wife, Mrs. Patient Grace Umfrim, who in an interview told our correspondent how the incident in 2019 led to the death of her husband in January 2023. 2019. My husband was coming back from work and somehow he missed the company's vehicle and so he had to take um, a vehicle home at Barnex Plaza. He took a vehicle supposedly coming towards Kaduna Road. But um, all he realized at the end of the day was that um, as soon as he came in, they had um, a gun and then a hand on his shoulder and he knew of course who they were and then he tried to open the door to run out and they gave him a stab on towards his knee fortunately it missed his knee and then from there they took him to a particular POS uh, I mean ATM and then uh, he gave them his ATM card fortunately for them it was paid on that day so they, they got some money one chance people they got some money to withdraw, but it was not enough. He had a certain card that we did business with a foreign uh, company, and it was a dollar card. And they kept asking him for the password, and he told them, There's, he can't even remember, it's been a while. He refused to throw the card away because it was a very pretty card. So that card resulted in a whole lot of beating because they wanted him to make sure he produced the, the pin and he told them he can't remember more so there was no money in that card the more he said he didn't remember the more beating and then um, a lot of blows to the head some stabs by the side of the ribs and all that and eventually um, some one of them said leave this man we've finished everything with him and so they threw him out of the car and that was towards um, far away from area one so he tried to get someone to bring him back to town and eventually he got back to his office and he was taken to the hospital. Uh, 
we had an initial treatment and all that x-rays and all but i want to believe um, something happened that they missed a very vital information in that um, um, either a test will i call it or scan or whatever which eventually led to him being sick for a period of three years we have managed that illness till uh, towards the end of last year which by December precisely became so bad after we've gone to several hospitals within the year, um, done a whole lot on therapies. Uh, by December, the situation went from bad to worse and it was deteriorating on a regular basis. The rate at which the, the difference in his health condition, you can't even begin to imagine and so um, sometime this year, I think January 8th precisely, we went back to the hospital and then we were referred from Kubwa Hospital to a Guagulada specialist, hoping that it was going to be for the best. Unfortunately, I don't know if this is the right place to talk about it, but I must say something. I'm so disappointed with what we experienced in that hospital. It's, I know my husband is late, but is something people should look into. You go to a hospital for hours on end, you don't get right treatment. You don't even get treatment. You don't get bed to stay on. But we were lucky we got a bed in two hours, record time. Other people didn't get, some people had to go back home. And so that's that done. Um, the next day, same procedures. You discover people are coming asking questions, but treatment hasn't gone on. There's still different groups who come and ask you different things, and you're wondering where will they treat this man anyway? And eventually, they did treat him. Um, he passed anyway. He passed, and then um, that was it. She stated that the aftermath of the attack had a significant financial impact on the family. Not for me, per se, because I wasn't directly involved in that. It was the day that um, I wasn't at home and the daughter had to help him to urinate. And she called mommy, daddy wants to urinate. And I said, help him. She said, how will she do that? I said, you help him. She said, mommy, like, help him? I said, yes, you help him. And when I came back home, she said, Mommy, I am traumatized. I said, but you said you want to be a doctor. She said, being a doctor doesn't mean I will treat my father. You know, that day was the worst day. And I'm sure my husband couldn't really face it. Afterwards, he had to make sure that, see, still, don't go anywhere. It was discovered that the diseased Kolawole had at least 10 stab wounds on his body after being attacked by four members of the group. He couldn't say much. We were only able to see a whole lot from what the marks on his body. A lot of people can't see what they do to them. It's really traumatic. It's traumatic. It's not something you want to remember, especially for a father who is supposed to be the one protecting his family. How do you tell your children that they beat you to school? You know, so, and then psychologically, not everyone can narrate that experience, you know. He couldn't say much, he just said, thank God, thank God. But the ones that was not hidden, like the head, he had like four places that were swollen and then the, the, the knife marks and all over the body. Several criminal elements have reportedly taken over most areas in Abuja, despite the scattered security personnel stationed in the FCT during the day and at night. However, victims of one chance and criminal element have alleged police complicity. Some of these criminals also pose as private security personnel guarding structures in Iwick's area. When asked if the matter had been reported to the police, Mrs. Offrey, in a narration, said officers who were at the scene of the incident did not help her husband to a safer location. To the police? Ah, uh, I'm not, I can't remember. I don't, no, we did not report to the police. We did not report to the police because, um, it wouldn't have made any difference at that point. Why? Because at the place where he was dropped, there was a policeman and he told the policeman what has happened to him. He didn't even help him to move him to the closest place. It was a passerby who actually carried my husband all the way to Rockview Hotels. 
and then not just my husband that day somebody else it also happened to someone else there you know so and police were standing by the police were standing by they, they my husband said one of them said that was not his jurisdiction so he can't help so what what am i going to tell the police after that Further narrating her husband's experience in the end of one chance syndicate, Mrs. Offrey explained that the cause of her husband's death emanated from the attack in 2019. Initially, it was uh, said it was uh, Parkinson. Initially, they said it was arthritis, it was rheumatism, a whole lot. But uh, by the time we hit the specialist hospital, and then they began to check from when we started going to the hospitals and everything that had happened, they discovered that it wasn't Parkinson at all. It was a disease that had a look or a symptom that looked like Parkinson, but it's a disease called um, progressive supranuclear uh, palsy, which totally knocks off your brain cells. You can't even think, you can't do anything. You, you're more or less like a vegetable, you know, so, and it doesn't waste time to take you off. So the, the times we enjoyed, I believe that it was just the grace of God that kept us together, basically. Humphrey Kolawale died at the age of 55 on the night of January 2023 after a long battle with the aftermath of a one-chance traumatic experience. During his service of song on Friday, January 11, 2023, friends and family narrated that Humphrey lived a good life before the unfortunate incident that led to his untimely death. Mr. Austin, I mean, sorry, Mr. Austin was a great man of God. A man that has a heart of God. He's such a person that when you step on him, he will wait for you to remove your leg so that you remove his leg instead of him to complain. Mr. Austin lived a life in which, well, me, I know it's resting with the Almighty God. If somebody who prefers to play up your positives than your negatives, as a matter of fact, the song of the Indian song, Perfect Imperfection, is the kind of person who sees the perfection in your imperfection. He was truly exemplary. He was buried amidst tears of her family and friends on Saturday at Gudu Cemetery, Abuja. Mrs. Humphrey, who lost her husband because of a failed government, seems hopeful for a better country as she advises the Nigerian government to. One chance ought not to be a thing to think about even in Nigeria, because if a child didn't even go to school, the country is rich enough to be able to provide for such a child, if our government is really doing the needful. So I'm calling on the government today empower the youths empower the youths because there, I, I don't i don't think there's any old man that will go on the street to try to get another person into this kind of situation they don't even have the stamina all of these things are happening with the youths so we need to find a way to get the youth's mind off negativity